All right, all right. Um, yeah, I, I hope you don't remember our last breakpoint too much. It was definitely a very different vibe from this year. Um, I still remember it quite, quite badly. And for those who weren't around back then, basically, right, there was this idea uh, once FTX broke down that there might be compromised keys involved in the deployment of Serum. And Serum was a backbone of liquidity for Solana DeFi. Lots of projects were integrated with it, were relying on it. It's the centerpiece for centralized, decentralized exchange arbitrage because most traders on centralized exchanges are used to order books. And, well, it was the main order book on chain at that point. So people weren't sure what's happening. People were pulling their quotes. And a small community was forming around it immediately ready to pick up. And I, I think it was within hours, 200 people were working on it bunch of protocols integrated straight away from day one. And it was amazing to see the community in this like absolute bottom point of like motivation, right? In the aftermath of FTX come together and build something new, right? Um, this is like a chart basically of trading volumes on OpenBook. I think you can point at where 2022 is, right? That's basically when we transitioned from Serum to OpenBook. Um, at its peak, Serum was trading $700 million a day in daily volume. Um, OpenBook is far from there, but it's constantly growing, more people are integrating. And because it was such a short notice, there was no time to change the code. It was literally just deployed as is. Um, community governed by a large multi-sig of key stakeholders in the ecosystem. And since then, of course, there was an idea, what can we improve, right? What can we do better? And the idea to make a second version, um, taking all the learning from all the different protocols on Solana that came out since then, um, create something that is completely free to use for anyone, right? It's a completely unmonetized protocol. Um, the only way to monetize it is build your own UI for it and charge fees yourself, but the protocol itself doesn't retain anything. It's a pure public good. It's completely open source, and we're lucky to be able to sponsor some prizes. So we did that for the Hyperdrive Hackathon. We gave out $25,000 prize pool. The moment we announced it on Twitter, someone came up and was like, hey, I already have Token 2022 integrated. Um, where can I send a pull request? It was just like one of those magic moments you can only have on this project. It's, it's incredible. There's so many people integrating. And it's not only like, you know, small projects coming in a hackathon, new developers, also established projects like Jupiter, Mango, Radium, who integrated. And a huge shout out to all these people who took the time, right? Like Dual Finance, MetaDAO, um, Solape, Prism, Tap Trader, yeah. see some of those people here in the audience. This is amazing, right? <laughs> so the, the big question that everyone asked, right, and, and kept commenting about, obviously, because Phoenix went with a crankless design, was why are you guys using a crank again? What's going on? What is that idea? And <laughs> I mean, it was, it was like one of those things we just couldn't talk about before releasing the final version of the code. I mean, if you were eager to read the source code and see what exactly the new hybrid crank is, then you could know before, but we didn't really want to explain everyone why it's being built, why we need it. Um, the basic idea here is, right, the moment you have a crank, obviously there's some latency problems, right? Um, throughput can get limited in heavy trading sessions. And a crankless design really handles that well. But there is fundamentally a crankless design is a degradation and parallelism. So the maximum parallelism you can achieve is higher on a crank design just for the fact that the matching needs to be settled afterwards and not everyone needs to be on the same account. It's technically a bit involved to explain. We only have 10 minutes, so I can't go <laughs> into detail. But um, everyone that is like into the debate, I would say, like, read the source code, look at the new hybrid design. I think the guys came up with an amazing solution there. Probably 90% of the trades won't need to be cranked 
um, they will just be instantly settled. And the crank is just there to handle those few edge cases um, that can't be solved completely crankless. But it ensures that the market is completely open to anyone and that anyone can match at any time still. Right? This is really important, right? We need to have the matching engine on-chain. And I, people also discuss that, like, why are you building an on-chain order book? Why are you doing that? Right? And I think the first time we saw a decentralized exchange that was based on limit orders, that was based on an order book, was EtherDelta. And the biggest issue with it was that the matching engine was client-side, right? which severely limited the throughput. It didn't rely on trusted hardware. You just need your own client. You need Ethereum, the blockchain. But the only way to scale that design is by adding trusted hardware to it. You need a centralized matching server. And once you start doing that, you can just go all the way right, and build NASDAQ, um, put a big mainframe somewhere, fully trusted hardware, and you have full control. But this is not what DeFi is about. right? We want more throughput, and we don't want to rely on trusted hardware. And the only way to achieve that right, is build a matching engine on-chain, build it on the fastest chain we can find, which is Solana as of today, and so people continue with that idea, right? And the, I think the optimization that went into OpenBook V2 was incredible. I remember some of the developers were sitting there looking at the bytecode as a decompiled assembly and trying to squeeze out like the last compute unit possible. So it's an incredibly optimized design. Um, and that's also the only way to make things faster, right? Either you do the hard work, you look in the code, you try to see what you can optimize, or you do it from the other side, which I'm also a big fan of. It's like, let's just optimize Solana, right? Let's make the platform faster so we don't rely on trusted hardware. A few projects that came up in the current hackathon, and I think they definitely need attention, um, need feedback. So I want to highlight them. Uh, Arcana um, basically allows you to build your own trading bot. Um, it's a tool built by someone who already contributed previously to Mango, to Serum. Um, it's a great team. I love the guys. Uh, they started doing this a few months ago um, while OpenBook v2 was still in development and finally released during Hyperdrive. Um, there's also Root. Um, Basically, they want to make a vault, um, automated training strategies, but even more accessible. You don't need to build your own bots. You don't need to build your own strategies. Um, these guys also released during Hyperdrive. Definitely worth checking out. And then lastly, I think one of the more controversial projects discussed on Twitter, MetaDAO, the profit <laughs> has ascended. Um, is a very interesting experiment in Futaki. Uh, kind of like so wild that most people don't understand it. Honestly, we were also a bit puzzled when this guy came abroad and like along and started contributing, sending pull requests. He launched his own um, order book in the meantime, just as a side project to show us some of the optimizations that could go into open book. Great guy. He's also here in Breakpoint, if you can find him. He's very anon. Um, and yeah, so if you're right developer, um, you want to have an order book in your application involved somehow, definitely have a look at OpenBook. I think one of the learnings that we took from overtaking a code base that we worked peripherally on but never really worked as core maintainers on was that there is some tools that are really, really helpful in building good open source projects. And fuzzing is one of them. I really recommend it to everyone. Um, you know, the developers loved it. It found so many bugs. And one thing that was really a problem with the previous integrations was that fuzzing stopped at this club. And we want to have the integrations also fast. So reach out to the developers. Make sure you fuzz your contracts, because security is really important. Don't want you to fuck up. So <laughs> that's it.